So it's always going to go back and forth real quick. I can't see both of you at the same time, which don't matter. I'm just asking. Um, well, I see everything. I'm on a laptop. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see, like, you, and then it goes back to him, then back to you, then back to him, back to you. I think if you turn your phone to the side, is that better? Yeah, it's still doing the same thing, but it's all good. It's all good. I was just – it's all good. I, I, actually, you, when you turn it to the side, your frame is full, which looks good. It's professional. Oh, so do it better that way? Yeah, yeah, actually, that's a better frame. Okay. That's good right there. Barum, and I'm with the Fighter's Voice. My name is Andre Ward. Now get out the competition. Fighter's Voice! <laughs> the Fighter's Voice. Ladies and gentlemen, we're live here on the Fighter's Voice Knockout Podcast. I'm your host, Richard Ortiz, for this evening. Joining me is the co-host with the most, Shelly Hollis from Stockton, California, rocking the Fighter's Voice Stockton studio, uh, getting ready to make and launch its debut in the middle of January, ladies and gentlemen. That's the Fighter's Voice, man, taking off not just in Fresno, California, but also in Stockton. And with us, the man behind the curtain, man. Don't believe anything he says, man. He's just not all hype. He is the man himself. That's Mr. KP producing behind the curtain, just like on The Wizard of Oz. Enough said, man. I want to introduce our guest today, man. I don't even know where to start, man. What part to go to exactly. I mean, the, the man does stand-up. He does writing. He does production. He does acting. And the man is just living life to the fullest. And I know he likes writing his 10 speed. That I did find out himself. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only, Noe G. Welcome to the Fighter's Voice, bro. What up, what up? How you guys all doing? You guys good? <laughs> we're, we're doing good, man. We're doing good. Uh, so many, yeah, so many questions have come in uh, for you, and you know I'm going to let you just uh, give you the platform, and I just want to ask you, man, where did it all begin? I, I know, you know, gro growing up, do, does every kid say, you know what, I want to get into acting, uh, you know, minus the sports, or did you do everything? Nah, you know, for me it was kind of funny because I never even thought about being an actor. It never crossed my mind. It never even, you know, was something. I I was just living life and, um, you know, at the time when I was young, I was just trying to figure out how to eat and survive. And uh, long story Pretty short, where it all began was when I was 15 years old. Um, I was homeless at the time. I was dating this girl and she asked me one day, she said, how come you always wear the same clothes or I never seen where you live? And, uh, you know, I just told her my story straight up. I said, my parents left me. I'm homeless. This is what it is. And her dad was a pastor for a church at the time. And he heard my story and he said, you can live in this house, um, you know, but if you're gonna live here, you gotta hear the word of God. I said, homie, I hear the word of anything. I just want a roof, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I started living with this family and um, just to get this straight, it never, ever, ever crossed my mind to be an actor or anything like that. I never even thought about it. Um, I was some kid in the streets. I never thought I could be this or that or what. At that time, I was just trying to figure out how to eat and live. That was it. That was all that was my concern at that time. And um, long story short, she wanted to be an actress. She wanted to be a model in the whole Hollywood deal. Yeah. And one day she asked me to go to this acting class with her. And um, never thought about acting a day of my life. But I went with her to the class because I always thought that if I pissed her off, that she would have me kicked out of the house and go to daddy, whatever. So I pretty much did whatever it is she said because I was so happy to have a roof over my head. And I went with her to this acting class and literally I was a right place, right time story. Uh, it, it couldn't be more, you know, more lottery winning than this. I was in this class and I'll just keep it 100. You know, I was talking smack on everybody because I thought everybody in the class was dorks and nerds. And, you know, I was some street cat, like whatever. So I was talking smack in the classroom, right place, right time. Never thought about acting a day in my life. There was a producer who was sitting in class that day. I was scouting out talent. And he comes up to me after the class and he says, hey, you're kind of funny. You want to be in a Taco Bell commercial? And I said, oh, because I'm Mexican. Oh, what's up? Oh, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So <laughs> I did this Taco Bell commercial at the age of 15 years old. It was the first thing I ever did in my life. And... Um, I didn't know this at the time, the way you get paid for commercials. I was 15 years old and I was ignorant to the way you get paid for commercials. So I thought it was like, you have to work to get paid, work to get paid, work to get paid. I didn't know the way commercials pay you that every time they show the commercial, you get a check. So if they show that commercial 15 times in one day, 
That's 15 checks, you feel me? And I thought it was a computer mess up because I didn't know about that at the time. But I had my story for court. I was going to be like, they kept on paying me. I didn't know what was up. But they started paying me for up to a year. I went from nothing to pretty much bling, bling overnight. So I called up this producer cat. I said, why well, I keep on getting paid for the commercial? And he goes, no, 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 that's right. That's the way actors get paid. I said, what? I said, well, damn, I want to be an actor. So that's how the acting got started. Long story short, he hooks me up with a manager friend of his. I go meet this manager guy. I walk in like this. I don't know what from what. And this manager guy, he goes, I like you. I'm going to see what I can do for you. I said, all right, cool. And what he ends up doing is everything he starts sending me out on was Gangster 1, Cholo 2, Trigger. I'm like, what? I thought I was here to act. I grew up like this in real life. I mean, I've been to college once. I had to drop somebody off. But long story, <laughs> long story short, man, like that's how the acting kicked off. So it was never nothing I was looking for. Um, I had no plan. I had no dream. I had no like I'm going to be a doctor, a, a policeman, a fireman. I had like none of that running through my head. I was just a kid living life. And I got hit like that, and whoop, there it is, and this is where I'm at today. Wow. Talk about uh, being at the right place at the right time. I, you know what? I, I think um, God had his hand on you the whole time, man, and just led you that way. You were supposed to be homeless. You were supposed to be where, you, where you're where you at, man. It, it was no such thing as luck, because I don't believe in luck. And like you say, the rest is history. But can you imagine if you would have turned it down and said, no, I wasn't hungry, or didn't feel like doing the commercial, or just didn't want any part of it? I mean... We I, thought, I thought he was on some BS, but when I gave him the number, I was like, yeah, whatever. But it ended up being real. Two weeks later, I'm on a set doing a commercial. So, yeah. You know, you take your shots, you take your risks in life, and you, you just go for it, and you hope for the best. Shell, we need to start going to some kind of class or something, man, and just, you know, maybe someone asks us to be in a commercial or eat some tacos or something, man. <laughs> Hey, man, I'm, I'm Mexican, homie. I'll eat them off a taco truck, someone's backyard. Like, I don't care where tacos a taco, homie. You know what I'm saying? So I'm all, I'm all for it, man. But, uh, yeah, it's it's a crazy story, man. It's it's no Disneyland, no fairy tale story, though, man. That's the truth. I can't even make that up. That's what happened, and it turned my whole life around. Man, <coughs> that's great, man. Shelly, I can't hear you, Mike, my man. Yeah. Yeah, your mouth is moving, but uh, you got me now. Yeah, there we are, man. Give kind of hit the charts, you know, for a second. Then I was doing some stuff in between, some light television shows, and I did a lot of industrials. Industrials are like, you know, I used to, um, and let's not get it twisted. Like, before I got my first movie, I worked all kinds of nine to fives. I was working at Olive Garden, Denny's, you know, KB Toy Store, Toys R Us, Burger King, delivered pizzas. Like, I did it all, man. Like, and, um, you know, it was when I did Fast and the Furious, I never worked a nine to five again in my life. That's that That's was sad. the that was the, the movie that, you know, started the roller coaster ride. But between that time of the commercial and the movie, I did a lot of industrial videos and TV shows and light stuff. And industrial videos like when you get um, hired for like, let's say Walmart, I was the mm -hmm. guy who was like stealing in aisle three 
and for like the security like if you see someone stealing in the store this is the proper procedure to do and i was doing like videos for you know hospitals where i was the patient and the doctors were operating on me to show doctors how to properly operate on a patient they were training videos for businesses so i was doing a lot of that stuff you know so i was always around cameras and media and uh, you know things like that or whatever so anyways when i got the movie a chance and an opportunity like that, you don't want to do mistake over and over again and learn from that mistake you know to move forward better uh that's where i would say you know th that that's where you gain wisdom and knowledge just through life and that's what happened to me so what it was like it was truly an unbelievable experience that's okay. what it was like you, see, you, know, you talk about different leveling up and shit in life and just moving forward man denzel is one of my favorites right how how professional is this man on set and how dialed in is a young character especially you being a part of fucking training day which was one of like his hugest films as far as act you know academy awards and shit like that like what is that man like on set oh he's hella cool man he was humble the only thing about denzel that i'd say man is when he was in character and he was in mode ready to work just don't bother him and don't approach him in other words you knew when you could approach and when you couldn't approach okay. but when it was time to work he took it very seriously and you knew that that was an unapproachable time because it was like, we're working now. Let me get into work. Let me get into character. Let me do my thing and, uh, you know, perform the best that he could and did, actually. So, well, in my opinion, just so we're clear, I think Denzel Washington should have won the Academy Award way before training day. Oh, yeah. that, oh, yeah. that, that's just... That's just, but I'm but I'm happy to say that I was in the one movie where he did win the award. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but but he should have won it way before that. But long story short, what I'm saying is he's a humble dude. Uh, he was cool. Uh, you just knew when to approach him and when not to approach him. When it was time to work, you know. In other words, it's like no when it's time to play and no when it's time to get down and work. You know what I mean? Yeah, I got you. And then dude, the scene that you had in training there and training day that was like a crucial ass turnaround scene right there. How much of that shit was uh? you from the streets and how much of that was like you guys preparing for the role it, it was it was i would say you know 50 50 because the director gave us freedom and let us ad lib and let us be us and so a lot of that was ad libbed and just you know created right then and there we of course stuck to script because you got to stay in the formula but you can always flavor it up a little bit and that's all we did on set so pretty much a lot of it was ad lib but it was probably 50 50 you know what i'm saying because you know again it's my first big movie I don't know how much freedom and reign I really truly have. I don't want to mess up, especially this being a Denzel movie. You, you want to get it right. You know what I'm saying? And so there was a lot of preparation for it. I knew the script, you know, like that, because again, I was preparing my ass off for it so I could get it down right. But, um, you know, I'd say it was 50-50, you know what I'm saying? But you bring in, you know, the director was so cool and humble, gave us so much freedom that that's what made it cool to work with a director like that where he said hey look man make it your own make it real let's get this caught on tape and let's make a badass flick here and um i feel like that's what we did so so yeah you know what i, I want to ask you when you you talked about danzel washington and when it was time to work it was time to work what was it like noticing that transition almost like clark kitten going into a, a phone booth and transitioning into superman what I was, was what was it I like was a, night to day I was a sponge, homie, just soaking it all up, learning, man. I'm, you know, I'm new in the game, you know what I mean, at this point. So I'm coming in fresh, trying to learn everything I can. And you know, the best teacher is experience, period. You don't really know anything until you start.
you know, I'll take to the grave with me and, and bless the truly have and have done. One actor we didn't mention, I, you know, I got to ask you, I mean, this guy's very underrated, man. What was it like working with uh, Cliff uh, Curtis? Oh, hella cool, man. We still keep in touch to this day. Um, hella cool hey, cat, he, man. Hey, like, he, doesn't, he doesn't look like he's from New Zealand, man. No, no, no. We oh, gangsterized man. him, bro. We gangsterized him, man. It was <laughs> funny. So, uh, you know, I'll give you a little fun fact. Uh, Cliff Curtis actually called me and said, hey, I want to hang out with some of the homies and kind of learn a little bit about, you know, the streets. And, you know, so I, I got a little barbecue together and uh, we took Cliff Curtis cruising on Whittier Boulevard you know, picking up on girls and hanging out, chilling. And uh, we, you know, we kind of gave him a gangster uh, session night overnight. And he just come, he just came and hung out with us and, and kicked it. And we were teaching him a lot of like what to say, how to say it. And, uh, you know, we did the best we could in one day with him. But he wanted to come and, you know, we gave him a crash course. And uh, long story short, man, that's how Cliff did his thing. So it was crazy, man. I'm, I'm cruising Whittier Boulevard with Cliff Curtis picking up on girls. <laughs> Enough said, man. I mean. I'll you, never forget that night, plan. bro. That's and then we had a little barbecue set up after. And, uh, you know, that's where we kind of got a little more personal. We're like, yo, playtime's over. We just kind of wanted to show you the life a little bit, show you the lifestyle. And then we wanted to kick it so we could kind of get that intimate time and just kind of like really answer his questions and know what it is he wanted to know. And, uh, you know, I was with Suspect Entertainment at that time. And so we just gangstered him up, and that was it. Yeah, he went from films like Whale Rider to uh, having a, that accent, to losing his accent, to being Mexicano overnight, man. Cliff Curtis is a chameleon, bro. He could play yeah. pretty much anything. He, you know, he was Pablo Escobar in Blow, you know, with yeah, Johnny Depp. Right. So, right. I mean, he, yeah, he, uh, you know, he brings it to the table, man. And that's true acting right there. You know what I'm saying? So I got to give it up to Cliff, man. Uh, that's my boy. We still keep in touch to this day, like I said. Uh, cool, humble cat, man. Real nice guy. We gotta ask you this, man. You know this whole pandemic that's going around. Um, you know, sports are are, are still starting to, uh, you know, slowly but slowly, you know, get, get a, a full crowd. What, what's your whole take on on Texas being being one of the first to have a full crowd? And when it came to the, uh, the boxing scene, um, man, you know, for me to be real with you, uh, I'm not much of a uh, COVID believer. I, I know COVID is real. This is the way. This is the way that I say it respectfully. Um, I know COVID is real, and I know it's out there, but I don't believe it's shut down the world real. You know, there was ten killers before COVID, and uh, you know, I always say something. You know, just to just to share something, and this ain't to get sad or all this. I'm just making a point real quick. But my mom just passed away. You know, six months ago of cancer my condolences and, yeah thank you bro and i appreciate on from this world because that offends me because people have died of cancer. So people are getting offended now because COVID is so over-exaggerated and people are dying of COVID. What about the, what, the government is so quote unquote concerned? What about all the people that were dying from cancer? My mom included, I'm offended by people who are selling cancer products to people legally and people are dying off of that. So I want every cancer uh, thing that causes cancer shut down. You get what I'm saying? It would just be ridiculous. Stop the whole world. You know, there's freedom of choice and, and blah, blah. And if we're really going to get technical and, and into it, a lot of this is in the Bible. All this was predicted. The one world government, the cashless society. I didn't know the particulars of how everything was going to be played out. But here we are in it. And it's being played out the way that it's played out. But all this is no surprise to me. I knew something was coming to this world that was going to be so drastic, so controversial. Um, you know, in the Bible, it says neighbors will fight with neighbors, friends with friends, even family members with family members. COVID has caused and created so much division 
and small businesses are being, you know, torn down and all kinds of different things are happening. And it's terrible. It's horrible. I don't wish any of this. I don't wish death upon nobody, whether it be AIDS, cancer, syphilis, whatever it is, COVID, death sucks, period, but it comes to us all. So the reason why I talk so passionately about this is because to shut down the world and to keep people away from stadiums and this thing with, you know, and, and the Bible says that the devil is the author of confusion. Well, right now, it looks like a lot of confusion going on in the world. That's the first sign that what's happening is, is of the devil. You know, you wear a mask, people are getting lung cancer from wearing the mask because they're breathing in the bacteria, right? Then they say, culture thing that's starting up fuck you guys you know i'm just there with it like i just don't care anymore bro so i'm just sharing my opinion and this is with no judgment this is with no judgment either but i'm just making a point like so because of cancer and whatever else you could think of that causes it and the government's so concerned about our lives they're so concerned about our families dude this whole world shouldn't even be living they're operating period because of the simple fact there's so many other things that cause death. So for Texas to be doing what they're doing, I applaud them because life should just go on. Not just in Texas, everywhere in this world. This is all really, people are being blinded and, um, and uh, what's the right word? They're being, uh, brainwashed. They're being, they're being, well, I don't want to use brainwashed, but they're being they are. swayed off of the, what really is going on. You know, it's a smoke screen for what's, this really, when it all comes down to it, is about power, money, and greed. And that's really the bottom line, man. And it's sick. It's sick what's happening in this world. But if you put fear into people, it's so easy to control someone more so with fear. And, you know, I know people now that, you know, I got homeboys of mine, they can't even go to their family's house because now it's like, man, you got to get tested before you come around your mom or your brother. And it's like, dude, I'm your own. And, and I get it. And, and again, I want to say this last thing and then I'm done. I'm not saying don't take precautions. I'm not. But, but, but take precautions and use wisdom in anything you do. You know, drinking. I, my stepfather died from being an alcoholic. You could die from it. The toilet paper thing was so stupid. If they would have said people were slipping on banana pills and banana pills are all of a sudden killing people across the nation, nobody would have went and bought bananas. You know what I mean? It's just so retarded, dude. So I don't know, man. I could go on and on, but it just gets me so upset in a passionate way because I care about people so much. I, I truly am a people's person. I love people. But right. let's just see through the smoke screen and realize what the truth is. And, um, you know, that's where I'm at with it. So Texas... Dude, I applaud Texas, man. Do your thing. Because I hope Texas infects other states to be like, you know what? I'm going to do what Texas is doing. And we go back to what we were before. And people take their own self-precautions of what to do, not to get sick or what have you. But there has to be a better answer than stop the whole world completely. Because death is going to happen before us now, after us, and so on. And you get what I'm saying? For many other reasons. So if that's the case, why are we not stopping the world for all the other reasons that cause death? You know, driving a car, can you could, why are we not back to the horse and carriage? You want to make sure there's no car accidents? Then let's get back on horses and we'll have less casualties than putting people in cars. You know, fuck driving, fuck flying. It's so lame, dude. So that's where I'm at, bro. Like, sorry, man, I got a little emotional. No, no, no. Okay. No, it, it, no, I just want to say one thing. Shelly, correct me if I'm wrong, KP, I know you're listening. Since this whole COVID hit, I don't think we missed one episode, one show of The Fighter's Voice. No, I haven't stopped doing shit either, man. I'm still we, out. We, we kept going. Uh, one day out of the hospital, uh, KP, I know you're listening. We still recorded. We didn't stop. And all my point is to give the fighters 
to give the actors because when it, when people hear the fighter's voice, you, you don't need a mouthpiece and some boxing gloves to be on the show. You could be fighting heartbreak. You could be fighting cancer. You could be fighting for your marriage, fighting for your rights, wh whatever it is. Nevertheless, Noah, you have a platform. You used it. I appreciate you using it like that because this is what this platform is for, to keep it real, to keep it 100. Uh, we take them all from 8 to 80, man. We, we, we don't uh, discriminate at all. And for you to uh, – Blast your views um, passionately, man. Man, I, you know, I salute you, bro. It takes a lot of balls to do that. I appreciate that. And, and what I'm saying, we haven't had one episode stop at all, period. Rather, we had to do the Zoom thing inside the studio, outside the studio. Nevertheless, we're here, still rocking the fighter's voice. We got this actor on here that's just blowing up, man. I, you know, I want to get back to Earth right now, and I got to say one thing, because I know Shelly has a question for you. There's one particular scene that you have – when you did um, Fast and the Furious. My son would always notice little scenes and they didn't have to be a highlight scene. They were just little scenes and he would always notice it. And, and to this day, we still use that term. Well, I still do. You ask for your homie, hey, show, let me see the fed yeah. and you And before you put it on the table, you looked at it and you go, that's right. And we still use that, man. To this day, uh, my girl give me something and I go, that's right. But whenever we do something, it says, that's right. My point is the impact that you make, because that scene wasn't even highlighted. It, it, it was when you were turned around and, and did it. But my son picked it up. Um, you talk about loss. My son is no longer here, but he's still here with me. That's why we do the fighter's voice. I am the original fighter's voice because I am the original fighter. I could have packed it in, put a pistol to my mouth, gave up on life, but I wanted to use a platform or find something as an escape for me, therapy for me, and at the same time being able to keep my son's name alive as, a, as we do Thumbs Up for Richie all the time and also give the fighters and, and the viewers and people like you, Noel, a platform to just slam dunk what you need to do, man, and you just did, and I appreciate you doing that to the fullest. Shelly, when you hear that, man, I know you had goosebumps. I know you were thinking to yourself, we, we got a real one on tonight. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure, man. And fucking, hey, segueing back into the shit, though, man. I was in Canada for, like, five years fucking around with the film industry, and it was huge, right? And I found out about, like, Bollywood and all that shit. Like, I know you work, like, you see Cube Vision, you know, so, like, you've seen, like, black films come up in Hollywood, you know what I mean? And I know you got a production company and stuff like that, man. How is the push for more, like, Latin films where you guys are telling your stories from your view and you getting, like, Mexican producers and directors and shit like that, man. Where are we at with that right now? You know, it's starting to um, it's starting to come out a lot more. Like I feel now, it's like the Latinos are getting our turn finally. You right. know, in a way, because um, what happened though, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, you know a funny thing to say, but and and kind of sad to say because number one is you know I'm, I'm down for my Latino people, of course, but. That doesn't mean I'm not down for black, white, Asian, and whatever else. I'm down for everybody because the Bible is not about color. It's about the individual. Mm -hmm. And so I want to just clear that up first. So I'm about everybody. But um, one thing that I noticed just being a Latino is, man, we don't have a lot of Latino films out there. No. And, oh, uh, it's, and it's sad to say, but this is the real reason of why, to keep it 100. There's only two successful back in the days back in the days i don't know about now because i haven't really kept up with it back in the days there was only two successful all latino casted films that did exceptionally well in theaters and made a lot of money do you guys know what they were real quick you have a guess well, uh, uh, a movie or a series movie movies we're talking movies here uh, Mi Familia, La Baba, no. Blood In, Blood Out, Marceline. No, no, Blood In, Blood Out did good after it came out on DVD. Okay, so that it was didn't do good in, It, it didn't was do good in theaters, but oh, let me oh, give oh. you that. Boulevard let me, just, let me just give you the answers. So, Selena and American Me. So, Edward James almost. Yeah, Selena and American Me. So, here's what I'm saying. Those two movies back in the days were – all Latino casted, and those were the only two movies that did bomb in theater, meaning like exceptionally well, made a lot of money and brought in a lot of loot, right? But every other Latino casted film that has been in theater has not made money. It went in theater Friday and it was out by Sunday, which is not a good thing. 
the way you know a film's making money is if it's in theater for two, three weeks or a month. It's making money, obviously, because they keep it there. Mm -hmm. So the whole point that I'm saying is a lot of all Latino casted films were unsuccessful. And because of that, they just didn't believe in an all Latino casted film because none of them were making money except Selena, American Me. Those were the only two at that time back in the days that rose above the grade and were in theater for like a month or so of all Latino casted films. But all other Latino casted films were in theater out. They were in Friday and out Sunday within three days or less because they weren't making no money and no one was showing up. And it was, you know, sad to say it is what it is. So it made it really hard for an all Latino cast of film to come up. But here's another reason that we got damaged for so bad. If you guys ever go to like Walmart or some of like the swap meets and stuff, you'll see like these all Latino cast of films with these badass DVD Blu-ray covers, but the film sucks. And when you watch it, you're like, man, they made this movie for 5,000 bucks. Well, what happened is back in the early days, this is what ended up happening in the early days. You could make a film for like thirty thousand dollars, and you could sell it to a distributor for two hundred and fifty grand, or sometimes even more. So the Latino guy who made the movie, he just made two hundred and twenty thousand dollars on top of his thirty grand that he spent. But he didn't give a fuck. That guy just spent thirty G's and said, "I made two hundred and twenty. I care less if you like the movie or not. I just made a grip of money." And the distributors, they started realizing, "Oh my God." We just asked ourselves out of 220000 and now we got to get all our money back and no one's watching the damn film. But the guy who sold it don't care. He's like, I got paid. And so now, fast forward, distributors, they're like, no, 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 no. Now we got smarter. Now we're going to make the money together. And it's harder to get upfront money and get a deal now and get anyone to trust it and all that, you know, cast and film because a lot of them were unsuccessful. So... It's crazy how the game changed. So anyways, my point, I believe now we're starting to make more successful films, more successful television series, starting to put ourselves on the map more. And now we're slowly starting to climb out of this rock and, uh, you know, kind of flourish. But this is something I realized, you know, in the early days, man, but no one wanted to believe in the thug. I've been preaching it, man, since Friday came out. Mm -hmm. I said it since Friday and I got witnesses to that shit. That's why I'm so earned. But when Friday came out with Ice Cube and Chris Tucker, I said, why don't we have a Mexican version of Friday? I go, we need a Latino hood comedy that's authentic and real, like a Friday. We need a Latino version of that. But I pitched it to everybody and their mom in Hollywood and not one person bought into me or you know believed in it, didn't do it. Even to this day, don't do it. It blows my, if you guys know any millionaires and you want to invest in that and make the movie, please let me know when we're done with this interview because I'm telling you, that's the one that will take over and hit the map and hit the charts and give us our, our real kickoff, I believe. But long story short, man, it's, it's, it's a battle uphill both ways and it's killing me. It's killing me to this day. So that's the reason why I started the production company because I said there's always two ways you're going to make it in this business. Either a millionaire believes in you and says, here's your million dollar check, go make your movie, or you make your own damn millions and you make it yourself. So I'm making my own movies and I'm going to make it myself eventually one day in time. Like 50 Cent said, I'm either going to do it or die trying. But that's kind of my mission. But, uh, you know, because it just sucks, bro. So that's kind of like the story on that with all Latino cast and films is we gave ourselves our own fight. But again, you know, if you got if you made 220 on 30 or 300,000 on a 30,000 dollar investment, would you really care what everybody else thinks? You'd be like, hell no, nah, I just got paid. Fuck what you all are going through. So, that, and I wanted to say this last thing too, bro, off subject. Um, hey, man, uh, you know, my heart to your son, bro, because I know how hard it is losing someone. But I like what you guys did. You guys said the fighter's voice, and you didn't shut down when you were told to shut down. You kept on moving forward as you should have. Here's one thing that I've realized in life. If you just keep your eyes focused on what your plan is and your strategy and you stay focused on that, that one thing that you believe in so hardcore and passionately, nothing can stop you, period. And that's why so many viewers will watch you and continue to watch you because you end up becoming their hope. And, and so, you know, I just, wanted, I just wanted to say, man, keep on doing what you're doing and I applaud you for that, bro. I applaud all of you who are involved. 
uh, with this show. And, um, you know, I love what you guys are doing. So keep on going, bro, because you got one person here cheering for you guys. So that's what's up. Yeah, and following up on what you said, did, uh, did you write the script? I got the script, yeah. I'm already in the middle of the of the mix. And, um, yeah, I got it all together. I can't speak too much on it because I can't let much loose. Yeah, you but, yeah, it's written. And uh, things things are ready. I just need a check, and, and we're off and running. I hear that. <laughs> no, that, that's good. And you know what? I call things as if they're not as if they are, man. And I, and I received those words that, that you gave me. And there's been a lot of confirmation tonight because – I was just talking to Shelly and just come out perfect man either way they still taste good with some freaking frijoles bro plain and simple <laughs> period that's a true latino okay. right there and, and, and that's real talk man and i'll blame it i'll blame my weight gain on the covid man but shally knows um uh you know that you know you got to be presentable you know we do some stuff on the side man i mean shally's a videographer and uh uh so is K kp I got, I got a great team and uh you know we do uh media interviews with the uh, um with the press, we cover the fights and uh, we do some ring announcing, some color commentating, man. So when we have our own homegrown event, we got to bring you in as a guest commentator, man, uh, to commentate one of these uh, these events, man. And uh, I just know that we're going to be, uh, you know, teaming up somewhere, shape or form. I, I, I just feel a direct contact, man. I mean, I don't know what it is or what it was, but when you started talking about some personal things, you you – spoke the words that I needed to speak, but in a different formula, man. So that stuff was real. And, and there was some. In producing and making sure that it, it's 100% the way you want it, man, your product. Do you got a name for your product or, or, or can you, can you explore that name just yet? Or, or are you waiting to make an announcement? Well, it's pretty much my production company right now. But, you know, one vision always leads to another vision. But as of right now, you know, it's Entangled Entertainment. And, um, you know, that's pretty much the, uh, the the product right now. And I'll keep it real. I know I've been cussing on here, but there's no judgment. There's no judgment at all. I'm speaking for myself. There's yeah. no judgment at all. But, um, I, you know, I'm in love with God. And I got no shame saying that. And uh, I haven't been the perfect example of a godly man right now uh, because of, you know, certain things that have been going on in my life. My divorce kind of jacked me up. Losing my mom jacked me up. Not that that's not an excuse to still keep the integrity with God, but I haven't been in full integrity because the other part of Noel G loves sin life so much. And I'm just keeping it real. So, you know, it's one day I love God, one day I love the devil, one day I love God, one day I love the devil. You know, serving God is one of the hardest things in the world. And I always tell people this truly and really. If you are truly, really serving God and in full integrity with God, 100%, the way you should be, you are not going to be the most popular person. It's even God's words who says. Not sure it happens. It's not who you, it's not, it's not us that they hate. It's the Jesus inside of you that they hate. So, you know, I, I get all that. So my whole point, and I don't want to get too deep into that, but I'm just saying this. One day I love God. One day I love the devil. I'm a human being. I got my issues. But at one time in my life, never claimed perfect, but in between 2008 and 2015, when I was happily married, I was in full integrity with God. And there was proof of that also as well in my lifestyle. And now from 2015 to now, there's been proof of, of uh, the devil and God in my lifestyle. 
because I'm a little back and forth, but I know I'm coming back to God fully 100%. So the point that I'm making is <laughs> my product yeah. is leading people to, to God because I want everybody in heaven and I want people to understand that it's about a relationship with God. And again, I'll just say this last thing and I'm done here. I never, ever, ever, ever press my belief upon someone else to each their own. And again, no judgment. I'm speaking for me. I don't believe in religion. I believe it was man-made. I believe in a personal relationship with God because when we stand before God, yep. it's just going to be you and God. It's not going to be you and a priest, you and mommy and daddy, you and your best friend. It's just going to be you and God, and you're going to have to answer for yourself. So my product is letting people know that we should all have a relationship with God because the more we fall in love with God, the more straight he keeps us to not do wrong. Because when you truly love someone, what do you really do to someone you truly, 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 really love? You don't want to hurt who you love. Yeah. And that's how we stay accountable. And that's how we stay in order with God. And so that's my product at the end of the day. And that's why I say it like this, man. Instead of keeping a gangster, keep a godster. And so, you know, I kind of look at myself as the Tupac of Christianity right now because <laughs> I know I've been wilding out. And even the Bible says, you know, being lukewarm is the worst place to be, period. He says either be all the way in sin or be all the way about God because the worst place you could be is on both sides of the fence because you can't serve two masters. And that is exactly what I'm doing right now. So I'm in this messed up spot in my life, but my head is right. But I know where I got to go and I know where I'm going to be, which is back in full integrity with God. So that's where I'm at, G. Like, I just don't care anymore because uh, I'm over what people think and say. If you're going to like me, you're going to like me for the real me, right. not for someone who I'm pretending to be according to what society thinks or says you should be. You know, if people could be homosexual and gay freely and transvestites freely and drug addicts freely and this freely and that freely and that freely, again, no judgment. But all I'm saying is we could be whatever we want freely. And at the end of the day, we'll have to deal with our own choices and consequences of what we choose for ourselves to be freely of what we choose for ourselves. So I just say that, bro. And, um, you know, that, that's where I'm at, G. Like, that's my product at the end of the day, though, is uh, I just want people to have that relationship with God because, you know, with all this COVID stuff and all that, too, the safest. God. And so, you know, that that's where I'm at, homie, like. I just don't care anymore what people think, bro. I'm over it. I'm me. And, you know, it just is what it is. And Amen, bro. Yeah. You're, you're, hey, preaching it. Preach the truth, brother. I mean, it, it is what it is. And and right now, it, it takes a real man to say, you can sit here and lie and say everything's fine and dandy, but it, neither one of us can walk on water, bro. I mean, that that's that's straight up. Or, or yeah. you know, we can say we have faith, but we ain't moving no mountains just yet. I'm right there with you, bro. I mean, I, I'm, hey. You know, I could preach all day, beans, rice, and Jesus Christ. But at the end of the day, man, you got to be able to walk that line, man. And uh, a lot of times I'm not too happy with myself. I know where I need to be, like we all do. We all, but at, at the same time, I'm giving it my best. I know what, what, what God has done for me, what he pulled me out of, and what vision he's given for me, and where people that, the certain people that he put in front of me that have come aboard on the team on the fighter's voice and has just made some strong connections, man. And, uh, Strong contacts, and, and, and you're one of those. Uh, Shally's one of those. KP's one of those. Co Escovito, UFC veteran, our co host. Uh, er Eric Hernandez, dog boxer, he's one of them. We got a small team, man, but but we're knitted and we're strong. I, I, I'd rather have a small team that's that's uh, honorable, truthful, integrity, and just that just wants it, that passion, you know. And every time you speak, bro, I hear passion come out of you, man. I mean, you're, you're ready for a leading role, bro. Or you need to get behind the pulpit or something, but you got some knowledge, man, to be kicking. <laughs> make, make a call, homie. Like, call someone, dog, and, and let them know, G. Got to get that fucking movie made, man. That's what that's what's up right there. You got like a uh, speaking, going back to that shit, man. You got like an imaginary cast in mind. 
Yeah, yeah, but that I have to keep on the down low as The most I can say about that uh, subject is that we are making a Latino Hood Friday. Uh, the script is done. Uh, we're, you know, just doing some final touches. We're at the point now we're kind of, uh, you know, we just need a check and we're in motion. $20 million. This is yeah. Friday. You know, trip out on this, bro. Friday with Ice Cube and Chris Tucker was made for $3 million. again to him or her and let's let's uh let's talk homie because i'm with it i got you Hey, Shell, do you see me on screen? Because my screen kind of went dark right now. Yeah, I see you, man. I see you over there. But remember, okay. this shit happened. So if something happened, remember, it dropped here first. So. Oh, but, but you know what? Uh, <laughs> this interview? It's okay. I'll look at a blank screen. I know you're there. You know what I mean? Oh, wait. Yeah, Do you see my, me or not? No, no, just my whole screen went dark. Oh, okay. Oh, so, okay. Well, no, but I think we, I see you, dog. We're on. We're good. Then we're good. We're good to go. Okay. No, but, uh, hey, but check this out. one thing that is real because i got to make sure after the show man i got to send you this shirt right here the fighter's voice shirt that's what's up i get a i get a free shirt a sticker and a hat that's that's right <laughs> in the hat my man that's right that's right so you i'll, know, drop, a, I'll you. drop an address on you right when we're done absolutely my man you got to rock this too man and uh one question came in it was kind of like a question joke man it came in from andy vincent who's uh 135 pounder uh, contender with uh, top ranked boxing. He said, How tough was it, you know, working with, with, with Paul and then realizing that, that he passed away? And, and how did not just you, but the whole cast take that loss? I know it's kind of like old news, but this is a question that he's asking from Andy. Yeah, Vincent. no, no. Working with Paul was one of the most awesomest things in the world. He was humble cat, nice guy. He didn't care if you were the one setting up the food or the, or the star in the film. He treated everybody the same. And losing him was one of the crappiest moments in life and in, you know, Fast and Furious history for that part of life. And uh, it just sucked. You know, I never forget that day. My phone started ringing off the hook. I was hoping slash praying that it was a sick Instagram Facebook joke. I had to turn on the news to see that it was real. And when I saw that it was really real, it hit my heart hard. I went to the uh, – crash site that very next day and um today i'll never forget to this day i got a lot of love and respect for paul you know he uh as a matter of fact you could go back on my instagram about maybe 50 posts back and you could see a little tribute that i did to him on the day that he died so but you'd have to go back about 50 45 posts to see it yourself but long story short man paul walker was an awesome dude 
and um, most friendliest guy ever. And I got a lot of love for Paul Walker and his family. And I'll give you one fun fact. What I respect about Universal Studios, because Paul Walker was signed on to go to part 10 of Fast and the Furious, and so was Vin Diesel. They were going to go all the way up to Fast and the Furious part 10, because Fast and the Furious is the most money-making franchise for Universal Studios. No movie that Universal Studios has ever done has made more money than Fast and the Furious for Universal Studios. So it's the largest of Universal Studios. Harry Potter's is the one for Warner Brothers, and every studio has their top film. Universal's is Fast and the Furious, the, the franchise. Anyways, my point, they were going to go all the way up to part 10, and Paul Walker was signed on for that. What I respect about Universal Studios is they went to Paul Walker's family and said, hey, you know, since he passed away, can we have your blessing to continue on with Fast and the Furious, or should we stop it here? And Paul Walker's family blessed them to go on because they thought that that's what Paul Walker would want. And so they're continuing on with the series, um, even though it's not the same without Paul Walker. So I just, I just think that was awesome of Universal for that to be their number one top money-making film. And they weren't going to continue without the family's blessing. That's how much respect they had for Paul Walker. So I think that was awesome of them to do that, you know, in that area. So that that's uh, that was hella cool. But Paul Walker, man, hands down, still remembered to this day, um, still alive in our hearts to this day. And I got a lot of love for Paul Walker. No, that's that's hey, that's a real uh, touching, unknown fact. I, I I didn't know all that. And um, to for you to share it, man, is is remarkable. And for uh, uh, the studio to have the respect to ask for, for the blessing, for permission, and for them to grant that permission and be able to uh, keep his legacy and his life uh, still alive. Cause I know it does uh, reflect on a lot of uh, actors that are involved in, in the motion picture as they move forward. Hey, one question that comes to mind, it's kind of like a joke question, but the, this question is coming in from Bill Coddington from Adair, California. He says, Hey Rich, uh, ask bro, how many white t-shirts does he have? <laughs> That's funny, man. So, the white t-shirt thing is hilarious because uh, just so we're all clear, and, and I don't say this, you know, sarcastically or not, you just know how it is. When you're from the streets, you got to look fresh every day. Time. So every t-shirt I wear is always brand new every single day. And um, right now I'm in Las Vegas, so I'm in the hotel. And uh, just to show you guys the proof, because I just I just do it like this. I can't. I, I have... Uh, all my shirts right here, brand new, never been worn. And I have about six more in my luggage bag that are all brand new, never worn. So I'm buying white shirts left and right because I don't know. I just keep it simple, bro. Like Hollywood didn't change nothing for me, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, all it is is a job. And long story short, um, I'm always wearing a brand new white shirt or a brand new black shirt. And that's what I wear mainly, you know? So anyways... And shit, that was good. In my fucking twenties, that was it. You got a fresh white tee, a fitted cap, and some J's on, bro. That was that was a win every okay. fucking day. Yeah, and for me, that's still the win. <laughs> I'm old school. It's the win, dog. Yeah. Like I said, like before you jumped on, because I don't know if you were on or not before you came. I think you came in the middle, but I was telling them your 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 homies right here, your co-hosts, uh, straight up, straight out. I literally just to show you how old school I am. No joke, no lie. I literally just got rid of my BlackBerry a year ago. Yes. I was holding on to my BlackBerry for that. I could not let go of the damn BlackBerry. I just, these iPhones were so confusing to me. I'm not computer smart. I don't even know how to turn one on, whatever. Like, I just know reply and like little simple stuff like that. I stopped at Super Nintendo, but <laughs> I, I'm the old school cat, bro. So I'm still rocking the white shirts, a hat jeans and keep it simple like that like nothing nothing changed wardrobe wise for me you know i'm not so that that's it but yeah man so i'm always buying brand new white tees and black tees like left and right hey man i, I gotta ask you this man uh i don't see a dodger hat on you man aren't you a dodger fan <laughs> i got la right here bro oh, okay, yeah. come on, dog. Okay, there you go dog, come on dude that's uh, oh, no, somebody else, man. So I tell no, I'll tell you that. Loud, man. Dodgers, Lakers, and Raiders, those are my teams. Oh, damn. 
Yeah. Well, I'm a Cowboy fan, and, uh, you know, we're keeping our – we're holding our, our, our breath. And I'm a New York Knicks fan, so we're taking our lumps right now. But, uh, you know, I got to be faithful and stick with them. Yeah, and no, I'm with you. I, dude, I'm sh- no, no hate here to each their own. You know, we all got our teams. It is what it is. I'm cool. So I, I got to ask you this, man. I at least got to ask you one boxing or one MMA question, man. But before uh, I do so, um, the 140-pound unified uh, lightweight – the super lightweight champion of the world, Jose Ramirez. He also has a, a shirt for you, which I don't have right now, a shirt and a hat for you, which we'll be sending. And, uh, you know, I'll get your sizes later. So not only are you going to have a Fighter's Voice t-shirt and hat, but you're going to have one from the, the champ, the undefeated champ, um, Jose Ramirez, who's the unified champ, the WBC and the WBO super lightweight champion. Um, he has a, uh, don't have a date yet, but his opponent in front of him is going to be uh, – Josh Taylor, who has the other two bouts, the WBA and the IBF, and they're both undefeated. They're both in their prime. They're both Olympians and uh, just waiting for that mega showdown. But when it does happen, you'll be looking fresh, rocking Jose Ramirez's hat and tee. So just want to let you know, man, we're showing love back at you, baby. That's what's up, man. Cool, cool. Yeah, I'll drop an address on you with some sizes. And, you know, thank you guys for the gifts. Um, you know, any any gift, just the thought counts, man. So I'm, I'm appreciative of anything. Uh, given so thank you guys i appreciate that yeah. well we got uh ryan garcia fighting this saturday and uh he's a, a mega star when it comes to the instagram when it comes to the youtube but uh you know the pretty face the boy can fight uh, they said he's the second coming to oscar de la hoya he's putting his undefeated record on the line uh taking on uh campbell that's uh, going to be live on on the zone shelly before i ask uh our guest noe uh, who do you have and, and how do you see this fight ending <laughs> oh man you know honestly I, I don't like to call out like that you know on who i have or don't have um i'll be real with you man i kind of uh i i kind of slowed down a little bit on on watching boxing you know because i don't know i just feel like you ever seen the movie warrior mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. I, dude i want a fighter back like that one who doesn't care about the news, the magazines, yeah. the media. One who just comes in to fight Throw to that. fight. I, I, why are we being – I get there's a professional side to it, you know, but it's not, not too conservative. Like, I don't know, man. Like, I, I got mixed emotions on boxing, bro. It just it just jacked me up, man. I just – I don't – those are just hard questions to answer because I like – you ever seen Jerry Maguire? Yeah, Jerry Maguire with Tom, with Tom Cruise. So here's here's one thing I will say. I think money messed up sports a little bit. To keep it real, oh, big time. I, I think I think it was better when they came in with their full heart, and it's not about the sponsorships. It's not about what they can get out of it, how much they're going to get paid, whatever, whatever. You know, we even have the movie Rocky where. You know, he even got watered down a little bit when he started making so much money in Rocky Part Three, and it was like he had to live like a fighter. That's not to say that you can't have the millions and still not fight. That's why this is, you know, we don't got the time right now because it's going to be another hour and a half. But all <laughs> I'm trying to say is that, too, bro. All, all I'm trying to say is like, you know, I wish we had like the fighting back in the Muhammad Ali days. Yeah. You know, I wish we had the old Mike Tyson when he was Mike Tyson, like. You know, I, I just – those were the fights that I really, really appreciated. What do you think of Mike Tyson uh, coming back in the ring? Oh, that fight was whack as hell, bro. Like, you know, <laughs> it, it was – I thought it was – I thought it was, you know, a tie. And, a tie. You know, they're fighting for charity. And I don't know, there's so many red flags in that. Like, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just not a – I'm not a boxing fan no more like I used to be, bro. And I and I hardcore, you know, it's sad to say, it's so sad to say because I hardcore was a boxing fan. Like, I love the sport. I love it. But I put those three together. I want an old school boxer who doesn't care about the followers he has, the the news media, like Warrior, like the best way I could, you know, Warrior, the movie Warrior, that guy like, He's like, I'm here to fight. Like, like, fuck all y'all. Like, I don't need to interview. I'm not gonna tell you how I fight, what my special sauce is. I ain't gonna. You ain't gonna get nothing out of me. All you're gonna get out of me is a fight, me kicking ass and going home 
and not giving a fuck about all y'all. And and him so gritty that people just want to watch that guy because of how much he don't care. He's just a fighter who wants to fight, kick ass, and go home. But now we got so many fighters, man, that just you know. But again, it's a catch twenty two. I understand yeah. it. Like I understand the other side of it where. That's just, that's a hard one, dude. Like, I can't even speak on it, bro. But that's why I put, like, I don't know, dude. I, I just believe water, I mean, I believe money watered down sports. And, um, you know, I, sometimes you just don't know what fights are real and what fights aren't. You know what I mean? And and um, I'm just an outsider, you know, speaking from the outside in. But, you know, I've heard all kinds of controversy and all kinds of different things and seen stuff with my own eyes to formulate my own opinion and, it's just a touchy subject for me, bro. Like, I really don't have an opinion on it. You know, it's just, again, this would be a one-hour conversation. But all I say is, I wish we had an old Mike Tyson back, an old Muhammad Ali back, you know, someone of that nature that just didn't give a flying fuck. Can, you know, you know, one of the best fights I saw, too, was, like, the Oscar De La Hoya-Fernando Vargas fight? Yeah. You know, like... Like, Fernando had so much hate. And Fernando's my boy. I love Fernando. That's my boy. That's my people. But Actually, we, we just had Fernando on last week, him and his son. That, that's my homies. Those are my people right there, you know. And that's right. But I like fights like that. Like, you know, coming in with just just hate, bro. Like, I'm here to fight. Like, I, you know, fuck the audience. Fuck the introduction. Let's just get into it, you know, and, and stuff like that. It's a, but then, you know, when they do all that, and then you see him shake hands at the end, Sometimes you're like, what? Like, then it makes you think. Like, I don't know, bro. I just got so many mixed feelings on it. No, I, I hear you. I hear you on that one. Oh, you got that. That's that old school street shit. You're like, no, nah, I'm fucking you up, dog. We ain't friends. I'm <laughs> that shit. Is. It, it's just hard, man. That's a hard one to answer, bro. Yeah, but yeah. I love my boxers. I love my fighters, man. Um, you know, I still watch them. All I right. still watch them in the high hopes of seeing something that I won't, you know, might have not seen or what. But some of the last fights I've seen. I'll tell you what fights, honestly, are the best ones to keep it 100. Let me say this, and I forgot. You know what fights are the best ones sometimes? Are the pre-fights before the main fight. Oh, yeah. Because they're going at it to get to to be a main fight. Yep. But then sometimes when you watch a main fight, you're like, this fool already knows he's getting $20 million. I don't got to fight that hard, but I'll still fight to keep up the name. And, I mean, again, there's just so many mixed feelings, bro. This is a two-hour conversation and you know so i i can't get into it right now but um you know i know we got like 10 minutes left or whatever but i'm just saying it's, it's like damn dog it's that that's a tough one bro hey, well with this, with this, this covid lifts man we got to get you in studio man and, and do it the right way fuck uh, yeah great Cheers. where are you guys at now i'm in fresno shelly's in stockton either way we'll make it happen oh gotcha, gotcha. Where you at? okay you on la or vegas where you said I'm in Orange County. I live in Anaheim right by Disneyland. So, you know, just holler at me. We'll talk some details and yeah, you know, yeah. try to make it work. That way, we'll do some on-site shit, too. We'll do something on-site out that way because that's where everything's at, man. But fucking Rich, an answer for your question, here's the deal, man. This Campbell fight this weekend, yeah. this is going to be fucking Ryan's lesson like when Canelo fought Floyd. This okay. shit's going to make it better, but he's not going to win this, though. He's going to get taught a fucking lesson, and then he's going to go back to the drawing board, and he's going to become a real <laughs> fighter after this weekend. That's what's going on. Wow, that, I'm, 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 I'm going to go bold right there. Very bold a, right there. I'm going to go with my boy right here. I'm just going to back up what he said. Okay, that's two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, I'm telling you, watch, watch my fucking words. This okay. The lesson he gets, that's going to make him a real fucking uh, body. Let me sum time. up everything that I'm saying, though. This is the bottom okay. line quote of everything. I just want a fighter back who doesn't give a flying fuck. Right. <laughs> That's what I want. That's what, fuck you, a fucking fighter, dog. You should not. Like, you can't be thinking about what is fucking next. You got to run through motherfuckers. That's it. Yeah, but, you know, I, I get the sports side to it. I, and, and, again, this is a one-hour conversation. I just, anyways, it, that's so touchy for me. I, I don't know. You know, I, I think I said as much as I can for now, but, uh, that's a touchy one. Well, you know, that's a bold uh, statement. That's a bold prediction. And we're going to see. If that comes to pass, I'm not saying it can't because this is boxing. I've been around it for, for a minute. It's, it's very possible. I mean, you can both be correct, but we have it right here only on the fighter's voice, man, because nobody has made a prediction like that for this weekend. So uh, we're going to hold on to this taping right now, man, and make sure that the viewers, the fans, and the followers, man, uh, they heard it firsthand from Shelly Hollis and uh, Noe G, man, taking uh, Campbell, man, to a – can I call it an upset, Shelly, or should I? 
Yeah, I guarantee, guarantee fucking T. That's how I see it going, man. Like, no other way. Uh, just the hour knockout. Stop it, bro. Stop it. I'm fucking going to you know, be like mommy holding him up in the fucking corner. He ain't going to know what happened. Stop it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's pretty bold. Clear cut, Shelly. There we go, man. Uh, no, I, I got to ask you one more question, man. When did you know exactly, hey, and, and you said after that Taco Bell commercial that you said, you know what, no more nine to five. This is what I'm doing for a living, both inside and out. I'm going to take the good with the bad, but I'm going to write my own destiny. And, and that's that script that you're holding on to. When did you know, okay, I'm all in. No no safety nets, no plan B. Well, to be real with you, and um, I'll keep this answer short and straight up, when I first got into acting, I won't be honest and upfront, it was all about the money because I never made so much money so quickly. And I never got paid so much for just one day's work. I only worked one day in my life and got paid for almost up to a year because they kept on showing it. So it was like a continuous check after check after check. And long story short, I never made that much money that damn quick. So at first it was all about the money. But as I started doing it, it became a true passion for me because I think we have the funnest job in the world. It's never the same thing. We're always in a different spot. We travel for free. We always work with different people. It was just a beautiful thing. It's not like coming back to the same thing after the same thing after the same thing. Every day of work is always something different. That's when it became a true passion for me and not about the money anymore because I love this job. And we all know the old saying, if you truly love what you're doing, it's not work. And so long story short, man, this ain't work for me. I've been truly blessed in my life uh, to be where I'm at and to be able to do what I'm doing. And long story short, I just want to continue making movies and and until the day I die, until I can't no more, and and that's it. So, you know, that that's kind of the short story on that. What, what actors today that, that kind of fit in, in your role in, in your area – that 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 you admire or or say you know what I, I you know that that dude has talent or she has talent and I'm talking about because there's there's a lot of certain roles that certain people have. No, I love actors that could play. I love actors like Cliff Curtis or Tom Hanks or Danny DeVito or uh, Joe Pesci who can play different characters and different roles. So I admire actors like that who are chameleons who can go from this to this to that to that. You know, like Denzel Washington and his stuff and you know people like that. So that's kind of you know, but. What makes someone special is being their only me. I don't want to be like anybody else because then that don't make me special. You got to be your only you. You know, God gave you a gift inside of you that makes you special and unique. And so, you know, I want to be my own me like everyone else is their own me. And uh, long story short, though, but it doesn't mean that I can't look at people and say, that's a cool way to do it. That's a cool way to do it. That's a cool that let me put my own ingredients and recipe together and cook my own cake. And long story short, man, that's where I'm at. So I just admire actors who could play different roles and do different things. And that's why I started my production company, too, because if no one's going to give you an opportunity, give you give the opportunity to yourself. And that's exactly what I did. So and the two movies that I made, which are available now, I got to plug them real quick. Yeah. A Ditch Party and A Psychos Path, available on Amazon Prime, Tubi TV, and uh, Hulu and all that. I play two different characters that are completely out of the box. In Ditch Party, I play a janitor. And in Psycho's Path, I play a police officer. So, you know, I got a full head of hair, no mustache, and goatee. So, like I said, if no one's going to give you the opportunity, give you the opportunity to yourself. So, anyways, man, that's where I'm at with, uh, you know, the acting game. That's where I, um, I, I believe in, you know, create your own opportunities. And, and that's what I did, so. How do you handle this? Because I know this is a little touchy right here, and, and you're going to have to keep it real right here, man. But there are so many copycats on your character, on, on the way you do things, on, on the way you dress, the way you talk, the way you walk. There's so many out there pretenders, or I, I could say you influence them, but, I mean, they're, they're, they mimic your style completely. I, I, I know you know who I'm talking about. Um, I, you know, I have nothing to say about them because it's all good, you know, if, if – uh, if, if you know, guy made a comment one time. If you never want to be talked about in life, period, do nothing, be nothing, and say nothing. You'll never be talked about because no one knows about you. Yeah. With success comes haters. With success comes followers. With success comes a lot of different things that you wouldn't think come with success. 
that are, you know, it's like, what, really? But long story short, man, you just deal with this as, as it comes. You can't let it stop you. You got to just keep on pushing forward, keep on grinding, keep on making it happen, and just keep on doing it like Nike, you know, and that's what I'm doing. So I don't lose sleep over any of that stuff. Again, I'm just me. I'm just doing what I do. It is what it is. And, you know, you know the, you know the thing. If, if, if they're talking about you, that's a good thing. And nowadays, if you're right, you're wrong. If you're wrong, you're right. Nowadays, no matter what you say, you offend someone. That's right. you, you know, nowadays you can't do anything without – not being politically incorrect or correct you know it's just we live in we live in such a sensitive world now and um you know we just we just got you know yeah people get buttered people take what you say a whole nother way that you didn't even say it so that's why i'm over it all you know but i don't have the time to defend myself to each and every single individual i don't got the time you know i'd be doing that the rest of my life and i wouldn't be living my life so that's why i just you know but yeah, man, that's that's and gee, I, I apologize. I didn't notice the time at seven fifteen. I know good. we, we as I got I got because I got to be somewhere at eight o'clock, and I'm in Vegas. Yeah. I got to shower, freshen up, and go. But let's say some last words and wrap this up in the next five. If you guys get a minute, because I, I got to go, and I'm already running fifteen not, minutes not, behind. Not a problem. I'm sensitive to that too. Uh, what do you got uh, for us, Shelly? Yeah, thank you for your time, brother. Ship sucking and inspiring everything you said. I receive it too. Like you said, if uh, if you can't, they ain't gonna give it to you. Take it, make that shit yourself. And that's my whole hustle right there. So good shit, brother. That's what's up, man. You know, I I thank you guys for having me on the show. Uh, I always say, you know, I, I'm just trying to give the hopeless hope and you know spread nothing but love and positivity, and encourage people, inspire people to make the right decisions, get in that relationship with God. And, um, you know, just get to know them more and more and more. And the more you get to know them, the more you'll start to trust them. And once you trust somebody, you start loving someone. And when you truly love someone, you don't want to hurt who you truly love. And that's how the relationship works. So I always say stuff like that. Uh, The Fighters Voice, man, you guys, thanks for having me. Keep on going. Keep on striving. Keep on grinding. Keep on hustling. Keep on doing what you're doing. Uh, You know, be, be uh, be the fight for someone else who doesn't know how to fight for themselves out there you know and and so get in the get in the mix with them as you guys have been and are doing so i appreciate you guys having me on the show um i always end with these last words i always say this too you want to keep up with your boy follow me on my instagram at actor noel g actor noel g give me a follow right there and i always say these last words but i always say god first and the rest will work yourself out amen brother hey those are the closing, uh, um, I wouldn't say arguments, man, because people, I mean, you know, they, they feel their own way about it. But nevertheless, you come around me, man, you're going to hear the truth. And, and and the truth is Jesus Christ, plain and simple, period, man. And uh, never never claimed to walk on water, man. But uh, I sure in the hell ain't going to go walking in the mud. I'll tell you that. Uh, appreciate, you, appreciate you taking the time coming on here, sharing your fresh T-shirts with us, man, your, your life stories, keeping it real, keeping it 100, man. And I know you've touched some lives tonight, man. I know Shelly has, and we all have. This was a, a very special platform tonight. I, I think God's telling me something, man, because that's two back-to-back shows, man. We had one with Fernando Vargas, and, and, and the brother just started preaching, man. He had people watch the show, contact me, and said, you know what, after watching that show, I think I, go, I need to go talk to God now. And these are hardcore fighters, bro, that have told me that. So that, that's real stuff, man. Appreciate your time. Enjoy the rest of your evening. And like always, I want you to join in on this one. Shall already knows what time it is. As always, it's a wrap. Thumbs up for Richie. Okay, fight fans, it's not good. I love you guys. Until next week. Remember, remember, remember. It's always voiceography at its finest. So on behalf of Richard Ortiz, Cole Escovito, the special guests, and all the crew right here at the Kick-Ass Podcast, saying hasta luego, babies. And always, thanks for listening.